Cool. Hi, everyone. This is the We Deserve Better Subtitles talk. Uh, hello. Thanks for having me. Uh, sorry, my voice is a little weak. It's been a bit messed around lately, so shout out if you cannot hear me. I am trying my best with my voice. Uh, hi, my name is Paris. Uh, you can tweet me at ParisBA on Twitter to tell me that you hated or loved the talk later if you would like. I would appreciate that. Uh, I am here from Tasmania, which you should definitely come and visit. It is beautiful. <laughs> It's become a persistent thing in talks that one of the, when we talk from anywhere else, we, we tell them that the coffee's better in Tasmania because it's true. Um, uh, I do lots and lots of different things. Uh, I'm best known as the co-founder of Tasmania's longest running game development studio, Secret Lab, where we work on Night in the Woods and Yarn Spinner uh, and our upcoming game, I Feel Fine, which you can see at PAX this weekend. So please come and see I Feel Fine at PAX this weekend. Uh, but first, just before I start talking about all sorts of heady accessibility UX things, I just want to say that I am a game developer. Uh, I am not an accessibility or UX or subtitles expert. I just build video games. Uh, I use subtitles for a variety of reasons, accessibility included, but I am not an expert in this field. I just like subtitles. I think they're important, and I also am involved in building video games that occasionally have subtitles. Uh, that said, I do have an HCI background. Specifically, I do have a PhD in HCI, Human Computer Interaction, which is adjacent to UX and UI, but is not the same thing. So I feel like I can talk about this from a reasonably informed perspective, but it is not the only perspective. Um, like, likewise, that said, I do work on a tool which is used by lots and lots of games for narrative and dialogue, uh, and somewhat powers a lot of what could be described as subtitles. And as I said, that tool is called Yarn Spinner. Today's talk has nothing to do with Yarn Spinner but our work on Yarn Spinner dictates a lot of how text and text presentation in games work, so we think about it a lot. Um, before I get started with actual examples of subtitles, I just want to say there might be some screenshots or videos of standard video game violence, things like that. Um, nothing that anyone who's familiar or plays video games would be too uncomfortable with, but just FYI, there's some things that are video game violence in here. Uh, and also, I will be complaining about how video games do certain things, but it's not really meant to be complaining about the developers because everyone makes mistakes and game development is really hard. So uh, in most cases here, the games I'm showing you have fixed most of these issues or at least addressed them in some way. So this is not meant to be a thing where I complain about video games and say these are people, are absolutely terrible human beings for having done this. It's just po pointing out how we can do better. So before we get started, what do we actually think a subtitle is? And there's lots of opinions on this. I'm, I don't want any answers before people start shouting them out. I, I want to show you what subtitles are. So maybe it's this. This looks pretty conventional to me. This looks like it might be a subtitle. It's got a character name, it's got some text, but it's also got a little thing that points to an explosion that might be happening somewhere. Maybe this is a subtitle. I don't know, is it? Maybe it's this from our, our game Night in the Woods. Maybe this is a subtitle. This could be a subtitle, but it also could just be part of the game. Maybe it's both. Who knows? Or this. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but there's some text on the screen, so maybe it's a subtitle. Of course, the really silly cheat answer here is it's, it's all of these. It's obviously all of these. But it's not this, the lower white ones themselves here. So there's lower white things here. Those are called captions. Um, captions can be and should be part of your subtitling efforts, but are not subtitles in themselves. Um, captions capture a game's key noises and atmosphere and gameplay. And if they're only doing that kind of thing, they're exclusively captions, they're not subtitles. Valve is a really great example of a studio that does really good captioning, but not necessarily consistently good subtitling. So we're mostly here to talk about subtitles. So you might be wondering why subtitle, what's the point? And I suspect a lot of you have some ideas in your head about why you might want to subtitle things, why it's a good idea to subtitle. Uh, often these revolve around accessibility. Accessibility is the obvious big one. Um, plenty of people have hearing difficulties and subtitles help. Subtitles help for really obvious reasons there because they can read the things in your game that are coming out as audio. You should do subtitles well for this reason alone. Even if there were not other good reasons to do subtitles, it's a really good reason to do them. But there are more reasons. Lots and lots of people who use subtitles are not actually hard of hearing. Uh, and this has actually gone up in recent times. Um, there's multiple studies that say as high as 80% of people watching television and linear media in the 18 to 24 bracket particularly use subtitles. But statistics go as high as 95%, depending on how you look at it. Uh, this is from the BBC subtitling guy, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, it gets really pronounced in the younger age group. Uh, there's some links at the end which I'll collect for you and you can just have a QR code so don't necessarily try and capture the information if you, if you want it. Um, but subtitling is hugely popular and it's actually gone up during COVID, people using it a lot. We don't really know why, we can guess, but we don't really know why. Um, in the video game world, 
uh, it holds true as well. This is the senior manager of accessibility at Ubisoft talking about some Ubisoft games. And you can see that Far Cry New Dawn, which booted with subtitles on, 97% of players didn't turn them off. And there's some similarly ridiculous stats for um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey and The Division 2, where huge amounts of the player base either turned the subtitles on or left them on. Um, and not all of these people are hard of hearing. Absolutely not. So subtitles are beyond an accessibility thing. They're really important for people's understanding of what's going on in your game for a variety of reasons, but primarily comprehension and retention. Um, subtitles help people retain what they're seeing and hearing. And the use of subtitles together with audio in people who can hear uh, increases the retention of the content more than just audio or more than just text alone. So when you've got subtitles, people actually pay attention to what they're reading and hearing. It's that simple. This is doubly true for non-English languages. If your game has multiple languages, subtitles really help retain and comprehend what's going on, the other language that is. Um, but they also kind of help people learn that language a little bit, which is really interesting. So by the time you're repeatedly exposed to that, you will have uh, absorbed a bit of that language. I'm sure anyone who's like watched anime is familiar with this, this uh, phenomenon, but it, it really does hold true in video games as well. Also, people just seem to like them. There's lots of academic research, which there's some links in the, uh, in the resources at the end that say people really like subtitles and it feels comfortable when subtitles are available. It feels familiar, it feels happy, it makes them feel like that they're in a place that they can comprehend and understand, even if they're not using them or glancing at them. And we'll get back to the glancing in a bit. So let's talk about the user complaints. There's a lot of standard complaints that we can list about subtitles and it's worth taking a look through those. Uh, hopefully you can guess a lot of these because they're kind of really obvious when you think about it, but it doesn't mean we as game developers do it very well still. Um, some people call these the basics. Uh, there's a really great accessibility advocate called Ian Hamilton that does a talk at GDC every so often. Uh, and he calls these the basics. Uh, and we'll come back to the core recommendations for addressing the basics later. But let's have a look at the user complaints for subtitling with some examples. And hopefully these will ring true to you if you've played any video games that have had subpar subtitles. So the first one is tiny subtitles. Um, absolutely minuscule subtitles that you cannot see are a pervasive problem in video games. They're all over the place. So here's an example. This is from Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. This is unreadable. Like there is, there is a subtitle. There is a subtitle there, but it's tiny, right? It's just too small to see. You absolutely can't read that unless you peer at it intently. And that's kind of the opposite goal of subtitles. It should be really easy to read if you need it. Um, yeah, this is just bad. There's really no excuse for it to be this small. <sighs> Here's another AAA that should know better. This is Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is slightly better because of the contrast in the background, but it's still basically unreadable as far as I'm concerned. Um, this is just sad. AAAs tend to do this really poorly often. They just dump really tiny subtitles with no settings more often than not and expect you to be able to read them or consider it job done. Um, AA's like pseudo indies, bigger, 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 smaller games. This is Raid World War II often get this one slightly better. This is, this is an example where they haven't. This is way too small. Um, a AAA that does this really well is Ubisoft. Um, the Assassin's Creed games, particularly Origins. For some reason, they all have very different subtitling settings. Um, does a great job with size. This is not perfect, but it's significantly better and is obviously quite readable from Assassin's Creed Origins. Um, again, Ian Hamilton, the accessibility advocate I mentioned earlier, has a really great rule of thumb for this. Your subtitle should be at least 46 pixels at 1080p or equivalent. And that's not perfect, but it kind of addresses most edge cases to the point where your subtitles will look okay if they meet this sizing requirement. Um, realistically, your subtitle size should be fully configurable though, and we will come back to that. Uh, this slide is directly stolen from Ian Hamilton's GDC talk, which I will give you a link for at the end as well, which is awesome. So the next user complaint is extremely long lines that make it hard to read. Um, size is not the only issue, text placement is actually a thing. When you are placing text on screen, you think about it very carefully in your video games, apparently except for when you're subtitling where you just let it do whatever. Uh, too many games, like this from Call of Duty World War II, but literally all Call of Duty games do the same thing, is not egregious, but is not pleasant to read just because it's so long. It's just too many words for one single subtitle. Um, a really bad example from a slightly more indie game, this is Canarium. This is just unreadable in general to me. You, you can kind of read these if you concentrate, but that's not the goal of a subtitle. It's the goal of a subtitle is to something that makes, you easy, makes it easy to comprehend, not harder. So this is way too long. Um, a really great example of correct length of lines, nice and short, is Xenoblade Chronicles. And indeed, most kind of Japanese or Japanese-inspired games actually do this really well for the English version because I guess they've been through multiple rounds of people considering the text. 
for the English version. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is really consistent about its text lengths. There is a really straightforward solution to this, and that is just to you know align your text sensibly and don't let it flow off the screen. Um, maybe this is because lots of subtitling in games comes from some sort of automated system where they just dump the text in and expect it to display on the screen and then call it job done. When realistically, this needs to be an editorial UX process where you actually think about it as much as you think about everything else in your game. And that's kind of a theme of this talk. Please think about your subtitles as much as you think about all the other stuff you put on screen in your game and don't just treat them like an afterthought that your text display system can handle. Um, here's the third user complaint. It's just way too much text. Um, it ruins everything. You spend time reading the text and not paying attention to the game and you'll get killed or you won't, you'll miss something or you won't do something right. Odds are you're not listening to me properly right now because you're trying to read that. You know, It's just too much text. Um, this is very similar to the previous complaint and kind of flows with it. Here's Hellblade, Send You a Sacrifice. Amazing game, mostly terrible subtitles. Um, the subtitles in this are just too long and are unreadable on some places. This is not terrible, terrible, but it's not great. Uh, this is kind of a big, small game, but the indies are also really bad at this. This is getting over it with Bennett Foddy, where the subtitles is generally too long and unreadable throughout the game. And the subtitles in this game are actually kind of important. So mm. um, here's my favorite really terrible example of hor horrendously long subtitles. Uh, this is so egregiously bad, I don't know how this shipped. But stuff like this happens more often than not. And it's uh, <laughs> Vermintide. <laughs> So, like, I, I think they, try, I think they were trying to go for like, does it, if you remember like Baldur's Gate era games where they just like spew text into a console, I think that's the feeling they thought they had. But realistically, what they ended up with was an unworkable, unfeasible subtitle. Um, it kind of worked in Baldur's Gate because it was kind of a D and D game at heart, whereas this is kind of not that. Um, again, AAA games also do this from quite a few years ago. This is uh, Deus Ex: Human Revolution. This is just too long. And this is a game that's really dense on plot and kind of expects you to follow along what's going on. So the fact that you can't read these subtitles just, uh, it just ruins the game. So the solution to this is just don't do it. Um, please don't do it. But if you, if you have to do it, break your text. If, you if you have to have really long sentences, break your text up in a sensible way. Just editorialize, do a UX pass on your subtitles. Don't just assume it's all fine. Um, a good rule of thumb here is two lines per subtitle, 38 characters per line. This is not a magic, this is not backed by much more than anecdotal evidence, um, but multiple people have arrived on a very similar rule of thumb, and we have to assume it's for a reason at this point. Um, Ian Hamilton, the guy from the GDC talk I keep mentioning, proposes basically this. He says two, uh, two lines per subtitle, three of it's crucial, and no more than around 40 characters per line. And that's for English only. Your, your mileage may vary for non-English languages. It's obviously quite different. So try to keep your subtitles short and to the point and actually editorialize them. Go through them, review them, don't just assume your text presentation system will make them work properly. So the fourth user complaint is about contrast and legibility. Um, if you can't read the text, it's as good as not there. So that says bad contrast, I can't tell if it's readable from there, but it says bad contrast right in the middle. Yep. Um, here's a really bad example of bad contrast in a video game. This is from Need for Speed Payback. Can you read the subtitle? Can anyone actually read that? Yeah. You can kind of squint at it, right? So I had to put a box around this one because when I was rehearsing the talk, I couldn't see it myself, so it's there. Um, yeah, uh, this, is, this, is, this is bad. Terrible contrast. And like, obviously, at some points, you can see the subtitles because the ground underneath changes color, but that's lazy. Why, why, why? Like, they've clearly thought about these beautiful dials in the map on the side and designed them with like, care and precision, and then they've just dumped text on the screen. I don't really know why this happens. Um, here's an example from Star Wars Battlefront 2. This is a video, so it might be sound. Uh, it's really hard to read in space when you're on top of like a Star Destroyer or something. Fighters, form up on those rebel transports. Like, sometimes you can see it. Stop them from boarding the Dauntless and I'll take them down. Sometimes it's just not there. I don't realize the markers on the ownership. Sometimes it's really hard to read. Sometimes it's really hard to read. Attack the rebel cruiser. How would I do that, Agent Hask? Seeing as my 
don't really know how you're expected to pay attention to that while you're attempting to dogfight in space. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, some of the more slightly, uh, the esoteric AAA games like Prey do this quite well. Um, most of the games from this studio do it really well. There's some other presentation issues here, but other, the, the contrast is quite good. Um, the really big games are actually probably the worst offenders of this, so the Halo series in particular <laughs> has absolutely shocking subtitling uh, contrast issues. This is from Halo Wars 2, which is probably one of the, the lesser Halo games in terms of its recognition, but what, the, one of the most egregious in terms of the, uh, the subtitling contrast. But I don't even know what's going on here. Some sci-fi shit, who knows. Um, this is bad, and you shouldn't do this. Um, there are a variety of solutions here, and unfortunately the one most people reach to as the first idea as a solution is actually a really terrible one, usually. And that's put an outline around it. Now, that kind of makes it more readable. And if you do not have dyslexia, you might be just fine with reading that. But if you're dyslexic, the outline or shadow or any of the other clever approaches you might attempt to fix this with are just going to make the text less readable. So you should not do that. Um, the best solution is to actually offer the ability to place a colored box underneath the text and ideally allow the player to vary the color and the transparency of that box. Um, something like this solves 99% of contrast problems in your games. Uh, you will note we haven't actually changed the color of the word bad contrast there. We've just put a box under it and it's improved it to no end. Uh, really, really, and I can't stress this enough, this game does subtitling better than almost every other game. Despite that, I will complain about them in a minute. Uh, a really, really good example of subtitle settings, especially around the contrast issue, is Destiny 2. Um, Destiny 2 has a variety of settings, including a preview in the settings, which is just mind-blowingly helpful, right? Because you, you then don't have to back out and find a subtitle to see if what you've done is going to work for you. So Destiny 2, fantastic work on the subtitling. So this, the fifth user complaint is obscure line breaks. And this is just such a silly one that just sort of highlights how most of these games are doing their subtitling with some sort of automated system or text display framework that then is, has no further attention paid to it. Now, now I'll complain about Destiny 2. Um, this, D D Destiny and Destiny 2 generally have some weird subtitling breaks. Um, yeah, this is a fairly gentle example, but it's not broken at a very nice point. Like, you, you, you have like a you know, a background in English or literature, you're going to cry when you see something like that. It just, it just makes no sense to do it like this. You can do a much better job. I suspect this is the result of automated systems that don't necessarily have the line breaks reviewed or some sort of scaling system that, doesn't, that means it's not something they, they feel like they can control. Um, it does get worse, though. This is Breath of the Wild. <sighs> Everything about this presentation is kind of OK, except for the, the line breaking. And I don't really know why it's line breaking like it is. It's just not great. Um, Ghost Recon Wildlands uh, has some weird line breaks occasionally. I don't necessarily think this game does stop that one. Oye, gracias for taking out that they pincher Reed and his crew. Word that the points. Undertakers were just a couple of putos is spreading. People are sleeping much better now that they know no one's going to snatch them in their sleep. So they've clearly uh, prioritized accuracy to the, the sound over anything else, I suspect, which is, means it breaks at weird points, which I guess it's forgivable on some level, but you can probably do a better job. Um, surprisingly to me, because I don't think this game had a great accessibility in other ways, Cyberpunk 2077 had really good line breaks on its subtitles and really looked like somebody did an editorial pass at all points in the game to make sure it made sense. But please remember, line breaks are editorial. The solution to this is just remember that you need to go through and look at it. You work so hard on all the bits of your game and then let something automated slice up your subtitles and line breaks. But if you give them some attention, this will just not happen. So the sixth complaint is poorly sub, uh, timed subtitles. Um, <laughs> this happens more often than not. And as I said, I think Ghost Recon Wildlands prioritized not being poorly timed at the expense of some other things, but it still happens. Uh, so here's an example uh, from Wolfenstein New Colossus. There's no, I don't think there's any sound on this video, but you'll see the timing is quite weird. All right, so like. Just, just doesn't make any sense as to when things happen. And I don't really know why they've chosen some of the things they've chosen here, because the subtitles just don't line up with the action perfectly. And it's like it's playing at about 10% off from the other things. Uh, an even worse example of this is South Park Fractured But Whole. Now, you'll hopefully see what's going on here. I'm sorry, I won't speak through this one, but. <laughs> So 
I get South Park's a pretty high speed property, like they speak fast, but this is just too fast to be digestible in any way and actually be a useful subtitle. So it would be almost better if they had no subtitles and just turn them off here because it just confuses things. And this happens so much. This happens constantly in video games. Uh, Destiny actually does this really well. So I, I did say I'd complain about Destiny. I think I only complain about Destiny once. Destiny does this really well. The subtitles are spot on with the sound. Guardian, high forces are lashing out from the Cosmodrome, led by a disgraced wizard named Navota. Disgraced? She narrowly escaped a previous Vanguard operation with her life. Now the brood questions her strength. She'll be desperate to prove herself. Indeed. That desperation makes her dangerous, but also reckless. Eliminate her before she regains her footing. Seriously, that was pretty spot on. They did a pretty good job with the uh, alignment there. They did some weird line breaks, which is the thing I complained about Destiny doing before, but other than that, the subtitles were basically perfect speed and perfectly spot on with the sound, which is what you should be trying to do. And again, this can be solved by an editorial pass on timing. Um, very simple. So those, those are the most common problems that I think we need to keep an eye on when we do our, uh, our subtitling. But if you haven't got time to do all those things, then you need to address the basics at the absolute minimum. So if you address the basics, you don't necessarily need to think about all the other things unless you have the time or resources. Because obviously some of our teams are very small and resource constrained, and it doesn't mean you necessarily have the time to do all this. So the basics are the size, the contrast, and the amount of text. So if you cover features or hard code something that addresses all of these things, you are probably okay for most people. It doesn't mean you have the best subtitles in the world, but again, game development is a matter of juggling priorities. And if you can juggle priorities accordingly and prioritize these three things for your subtitles, you will probably be okay. Size, contrast, and amount of text this is really important. So let's have a little bit of a chat about some more nuanced problems. Um, there are some more nuanced things to think about here that are often missed in this kind of discourse. The biggest one that jumps out to me most of the time I think about this is games versus TV and film. So most of the research around subtitling has happened in the decades of film and television's existence. Uh, traditional linear media, um, and something that applies to linear media does not necessarily apply to video games. And we just kind of assume it does because it looks like it makes sense. It's on a screen, right? It makes sense that it would be the same, but it's not quite the same. Um, or it needs to be tweaked to actually make sense in this context. One of the biggest considerations in this area is that games have a UI. This reduces the space for subtitling to begin with, but it also gives you a style that you need to mesh with, so you can't just dump things on the screen that don't fit the rest of the things you've got on the screen, which pretty much every game in the world does at some point with its subtitles, so you can do better at that. Um, people feel like your subtitles are out of place and they feel like they're not actually there for them. And I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, but at worst, at best case, it'll just be confusing and the, 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 the gamer will think you're lazier than the gamers presumably already think we are. Um, so don't do this. Don't, don't think about your subtitles as something that doesn't belong in your UI. Place them in your UI. And a really great example of a game that places its subtitles in the context of its UI is Sea of Thieves. So I'm going to show you a little clip from Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves, in this, in this clip, we're going to put down a mission and the game's going to be clever enough to actually delay the UI for the mission start and then show us some dialogue, and all of this is nicely themed within the context of the game. It's good to see you. The quest you're about to embark on isn't about gold or even glory. It's about protecting the life we hold dear. This is the Veil of the Ancients. It holds the power to open a permanent doorway to the Sea of the Damned. With this power, the boundary between our Sea of Thieves and the Sea of the Damned is no more, and memories can become real. However, to use this power, the veil must be reunited with three stones that were taken from it long ago. There are others seeking the stones, so you will need to act fast. Retrieve the veil stones and I'll make sure the veil of the ancients never falls into the wrong hands. 
Everything you need to know is in your quest book. Good luck. I'm counting on you. So that's just a really good example of a subtitle that kind of fits well within the game story. Let's pretend he didn't say quest book for a second, and everything else there is pretty much spot on. Uh, all the subtitles look great, they're perfectly sized, and they, they feel like they're part of this, this seagoing universe instead of just something that's tacked on. And see if Thieves does this beautifully throughout, um, which is great. Next thing I want to, you to remember is that games, uh, and arguably all modern TV and film, which is something that we forget in most subtitle research, are played on a wide range of monitors at a wide range of distances. Some people are holding it here, some people are holding it here, some people are still sitting 10 feet from the screen, some people are sitting at a desk. Almost all the advice and research you'll find, unless you're looking at very modern game-specific subtitle research, comes from the assumption of somebody sitting multiple meters away from the screen they're watching. Um, we play games on all sorts of screens at various distances and that needs to be considered. So your subtitles need to be flexible and account for that. Our content is also interactive. Um, TV never has to show dialogue options and games do. Well, some TV doesn't, unless you have some weird, I don't know. The UK experimented with dialogue options on TV for a while, but let's pretend that doesn't exist. Uh, TV does not have to show dialogue options and games do. And this transforms our subtitles from something that's kind of a passive element to something that's active. And there's only a handful of ways we do this in video games and they need to fit on the screen and fit in the context of our subtitles. There's the, the Bioware Mass Effect way where you get the ring of choices, which is a pretty effective way. And Mass Effect and Bioware in general do subtitles really well for the most part. They have some size issues, but overall they're pretty good. There's the, uh, the classic list of options with timer way, which also kind of works pretty well. And then there's the weird indie way, which, you know, am I choosing text or am I playing the game? I don't really know at this point. Um, you know, this is making a choice in a weird indie game. This, this, is, this is a dialogue chooser, I promise you. Right, so, you know, there's a lot of ways you can do this and we have to think about these sort of things when we build our video games and our video game UI, but this is, these sort of decisions and choices are part of your subtitling choices and are equally as important as your subtitling. When we're doing subtitling these days, we also have to design for multiple users. Uh, multiple people might be watching somebody play a game the game might be being streamed or captured in some way, or it just might be a regular old multiplayer game. And the subtitles need to handle different players, potentially needing different snapshots into the same world, different sets of versions of the dialogue. I could not find a good video of this, and I, I did not have it in me to install this game to take a screenshot for you, so please forgive me, but Star Wars The Old Republic, the big Star Wars MMO, had a really cool system where it handled uh, you being in a party with multiple human players who then one of them initiated dialogue really well because it was Star Wars They just initiated a holo call to your holo communicator that the other characters had so Basically if your friends were having a live conversation with an NPC and you were on the other side of the map You got a phone call and joined the conversation that way and it was just really clever You could still make the same dialogue choices and impact the votes on what was said the same way as your friends did But you had this thing you were holding you were looking at the, the characters on like a Star Wars holo projector and it went to the effort of actually giving you a hologram of the character they were talking to as well instead of just like a box in the corner. It was really cool. Um, this is clever mission design as well as much as it is clever subtitling, but it was, it was a good thing to do. Along the same vein, games can do dynamic subtitles uh, where you can position and adjust the subtitles so they are context relevant. And TV has flirted with this, so depending on the standard of the broadcast medium when you have subtitles in some television programs, you may notice they move around the screen so they don't obscure things or they cover the corner where them, the, the sound is meant to be emanating from, but it's not ubiquitous in linear media. Um, in video games, you can position and adjust them so they are context relevant near the speaker or change, just changing as long as the line is being presented. Um, film doesn't really do this, but TV has flirted with it. Um, games make this work pretty well. You know, Night in the Woods does this pretty well, I think, where we have a TV in the corner that's you know, shouting at you while you're also having a conversation. And it's very obvious that that dialogue is coming from the television, not from you. Uh, I don't think we see many AAA games use techniques like this. I think maybe that's because they're trying to be films. They're trying to pretend they're, they're filmic or cinematic in some way. But it would be nice if they did play around with this concept. So video games also have sound effects that are probably more crucial to being able to engage with the, the medium than film and television. Uh, and sound effects need to be subtitled or closed captioned, as the case may be. I'm going to show you an infuriating example here that you're going to hear with sound, but I want you to imagine how this might go down if you did not have sound on and there are no subtitles, because there are no subtitles in this game that work very well. This is Resident Evil Biohazard. And in the context of this scene, you've just killed a boss and you're wandering around. 
uh, and you're picking up some items, looking, looking around, and then there's a phone in this room. And the phone's only going to ring when you start to leave the room. So if you wander around the room for an hour, nothing will happen. It will only ring when you exit the room. And the phone has no cue that it's ringing other than sound. So if you were playing this game without sound or you could not hear, if you had sensory issues, if you just can't hear at all, you'll miss this cue entirely. You might literally wander aimlessly for hours before the game would let you progress something because you can't just intuitively guess what the game expects you to do next. I've ever seen make it this far. So what is it you need me to do? Is it going to help me get out of here? Yes. Now listen carefully, Ethan. So, you, unless you manage to spot the phone flashing for the second it does flash, and it stops flashing immediately, even though you can answer it, you would not know what to do next if you did not have sound in this game. And there is an optional setting that turns on the little icon that appears above the phone that shows it's interactable, but that is optional. Um, Sound information in games can be essential to your progress or your ability to survive at all in the game, but sadly, it's often not subtitled or closed captioned at all. And this just makes this game basically unplayable if you're not playing with sound. Minecraft does a really great job in the Java edition. It actually dynamically subtitles where sounds are coming from, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the newer edition doesn't do this quite as well as the old edition, but it still does it pretty well. So Minecraft actually surprisingly has a great, great version of this. And I think something like 40% of Minecraft players play without sound at some point, which is quite high. Um, and that's probably because they skew younger into that demographic that likes subtitling and doesn't like loud noises. So for now, these days, film and television does do subtitling better than us. It's just because they've been doing it longer. Uh, but they also have legal requirements they have to meet. In most countries, there's some sort of code of practice that linear media has to adhere to that they ha has, has existed for a very long time. And there is no uniform code of practice or set of legislation or thing that covers large parts of the world relating to video games and subtitling yet, which is a bit sad. Uh, maybe we should have some legal requirements we're required to meet. It would probably help our accessibility to no end. When it comes to talking about subtitling, one thing a lot of people cite, me included, is this BBC guide. It's legitimately fantastic. I highly recommend you check out the BBC guide to subtitling. Uh, it is full of fantastic things. But it is very much designed for a linear media audience. With that said, please do read it. Uh, there'll be a link in the resources at the end. You don't need to remember it right now. It's full of amazing tips that make perfect sense in the world of video games, even though it was designed for linear media. And two of my favorites are this one. It talks about the order you should use subjects and verbs. So you should say floorboards creak, or so-and-so shouts orders, not creaking on floorboards, not orders are shouted by John. And some of these are obvious, but some of them we slip up on occasionally. So when you're subtitling the BBC uh, reference has a really great set of resources that you can cite as the correct way to do things that are backed by the BBC in terms of the decades of research into these things. And they have other great tips like animal noises, um, talking about in factual linear television, maybe you should say lines raw, but in something like an animation or a game, it might make more sense to just spell out the noise that is being made. Right? And this is, this is really concrete, useful stuff. So I cannot recommend this enough. So I'm just going to sum up, and then we've probably got 10 minutes for questions, if anyone has any questions. Uh, try to think about, and if your team is small or agile enough, do these things first and then tackle the other things. Um, try to convey the entirety of the sound experience in your subtitles. A good subtitle conveys to the player as much as possible of playing with sound. Um, the text needs to be readable, match the dialogue as closely as possible and be well-timed and not obscure parts of the game, but it really just needs to match the sound. So if you can match the sound, you're a long way there already. Being faithful to the sound, uh, keeping the meaning and style is also important as matching it. If you can caption sound effects and lyrics, give hints on accents, do that. Don't edit little words out. So if you have short words or names or mistakes, so if your voice actor reads the wrong thing, make sure your subtitle reflects what the voice actor says, not what the script says. Television doesn't do this very well. You'll often, if you watch TV with subtitles, you'll notice they often don't match in small ways. This makes people feel like the subtitles are belittling or insulting them. And there's actually lots of research to say that. And you can find that information in the BBC guide. But adjusting a subtitle in a non-faithful way, making it not represent what's actually being heard, 
will make people feel like the subtitle is insulting and just generally give them some sort of feeling of unease or unpleasantness about your product, even if they're otherwise enjoying it. And that's probably literally the opposite of what we want to do in video games. So editorial decisions are really essential as well. Achieving everything you need at the same time is not always possible. So you need to pick and choose the ones you need to tackle and the ones you have the bandwidth to tackle. And most of the time, it's really important to remember that subtitles are accessibility and UX together. Uh, it's combined in one horrible mess. Subtitles are not just for people with accessibility requirements. They're for your whole game audience. Um, I'm not entirely sure why subtitles being for people with accessibility needs was ever a good argument as to why we should spend less time on it than other parts of our game's UX, but it was for a long time. But it should not be uh, just for people with accessibility requirements. It's for everybody. It's a vital part of your game, and the stats indicate this. It's as, it's as, it's as looked upon and touched as all the other UX and in interface elements in your game. If you can make your subtitles customizable, that's great. Please do that. It's highly unlikely that one style or set of subtitles will fit every player. If your subtitles are customizable or you can provide a selection of different styles that they can pick between, you're likely to provide something that all your players can enjoy. Um, people often feel like they have to make subtitles that fit everyone when really they could just make them customizable and provide some options. One of my favorite examples of this is from the really weird adventure game, The Adventures of Bertram Fiddle. Uh, it has a default pretty solid look. It's kind of the bare minimum you should be aiming for. It's readable, it's nice. Not too much text, the contrast is right. Um, but because people approach subtitles from a range of different perspectives and needs, you can accommodate that, and this game does. So this game has a whole bunch of different options that let you pick how your subtitles look. And if you are not a, a big subtitle user, you might feel that these look, look kind of similar, but there's actually a vast range of, of differences in these depending on your needs. Um, some people will be deaf and have no or less hearing than a fully hearing person, and they will require subtitles that are completely clear, uh, understandable, and faithful to the audio so that they can enjoy your game the same way. Um, other people will be fully hearing, uh, but will have subtitles on so they can glance at them sometimes so they don't miss something. And they need the subtitles to be present, but not too obtrusive, yet still somehow readable. Um, they need them to fade in the background when they're not looking at them and be visible and present when they do look at them. Uh, other people can hear just fine, but have some sort of sensory issue that means they might have their audio very low or very quiet, which means they may look at the subtitles more than the person who glances at it, but not quite as much as the person who can't hear at all. And they need something again. There's very different reasons to use subtitles, and they're not all the obvious ones that you think. So on that note, customizability is extremely vital. You can't predict exactly why someone wants them or how they want them, so give them the options to change it. You can have a fully customized character in most video games where you build a character these days, but then you still have to look at the tiny text. That makes absolutely no sense. At the very minimum, you should let people customize the font, text size, who's speaking, maybe, and the background. But we really need to be consistent. Games need to provide similar sets of options and it needs to get better across the whole industry. And subtitling needs to not be an afterthought. Um, they need to be something that's not a free feature of your text system or your display system that's never given any thought beyond ingesting your script. They're as important as all the other UI and UX elements that your team spend thousands of person hours working on and then ignore the subtitle bit. So please treat subtitles with the same respect as the rest of your game. Thank you for coming to my talk. This QR code will give you a bunch of links that I've talked about. And I think we have 10 minutes for questions. There's a microphone here. Thank you. So if anyone wants to shout at me or ask a question, feel free to either just shout it out or stand at the microphone. I'll shout. Yeah. Um, I have no, it's, it's okay. I was told it doesn't have to be. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, I was wondering, with all your research, yes. uh, do you have any good and bad examples of subtitling in virtual reality? Oh, gosh, yeah, no, yeah. That's a whole can of worms. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, yes, there is some initial research, I think from QUT, actually, in Queensland, about subtitling in virtual reality, where you, it might, again, I, don't, I haven't looked at this too much, uh, subtitling, it turns out, might be one of the things that makes people super nauseous, because trying to read while the headset is on is uh, a problem. So... No, I don't, but I will put some links on that page now that you've reminded me that I should. So if you refresh that tomorrow, I'll add the research that I found on subtitling in VR. But apparently, yeah, legibility of text in VR is kind of like trying to read in a car for some people, is basically the gist of it. Uh, yeah. Does anyone else have a question? Mm? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Please feel free to tweet at me or find me. Thanks for coming. <laughs>